Yeah, right up there, those guys. They are the birch polypores. These guys are really fresh. So I'm out in the woods, once again, looking for mushrooms. We've had a lot of rain, so now is the perfect time. Found a tree here with some perfect specimens. Might be hard to see. We're right up there, see if I can change the brightness. Yeah, right up there, those guys. They are the birch polypores. They are very medicinal for uh, antibacterial, antifungal, anti cancer and much more. Uh, I'm gonna try to harvest these. When they're young, you can eat them, but they are a little bitter, but you usually make tea, medicinal tea out of it. And I've come back to this tree before. I've been here last year, um, but these ones look a lot more fresh. This is my stick that I use to try to pull them off. So let's see what we can get. The rain has started up again. I'm gonna put my hat on. Been raining on and off. All right, <laughs> give this a try. This guy's right here. Oh, I missed him. Check this guy out. Look at that perfectly smooth undersurface. Now it is a polypore again, birch polypore. This guy might actually be ripe for the eating. It might be a little bit too big, but um, there's some smaller ones, so I'm gonna give that a try. But that is a perfect specimen, that is beautiful. And with birch polypores, they are annual mushrooms. So they grow once a year in the season, and then they die. But they'll keep coming back on the same tree for a very long time. So that way, if you find a birch polypore tree, come back again next year. You're more likely to find them again. This guy's really fresh. Woo! Look at that, it's so fresh, I caused some cuts on him. This, I'm gonna give this a try when I get home. Gonna give it a cook. I've never tried one before. Apparently they are bitter. They do make a bitter tea, so I uh, imagine that they'd be bitter. But they're extremely, extremely medicinal. Let me try to get one or two more off this tree. So yeah, I've never seen one so fresh. But see how fresh it is, because I've been I caused damage here. Well, one thing you can do with the birch polypore, you see that little layer? That's a spore pad. So if you get a bad wound, I mean this isn't the perfect cut, but you can. Oh. Oops. See I'm kinda tearing it, but you can cut down the whole spore pad and you can make a band-aid. It already has antibacterial, antifungal properties, so you can just put it on your wound as a band-aid. And it will heal the wound and protect it as at the same time. That's pretty cool. I never actually got to experiment with that, but I've heard people talk about it. So it's birch polypore. Definitely gonna give these a cook when I get home. another medicinal polypore mushroom that I'm uh, hunting for today. These are the uh, tinder polypores, also known as a horseshoe fungus or just the uh, tinder fungus. I like to call them the uh, tinder polypores. But uh, I got a few already that I've picked. And with these ones, they're very, very woody and solid. This is a really nice one. Now you can draw on the bottom like the artist conch. But these aren't artist conchs. This is the, the tinder polypore. Now they're not as highly regarded for their medicine, as highly studied, but they are very medicinal as of 
most of the polypore mushrooms. Not all polypores are edible. Most of them are. Make sure if you're going to plan on uh, using any for medicine, do your research. Make sure you know what you have because there are poisonous polypores. But this one is another medicinal one. Here's another one here. And they call them the tinder fungus is because they have this soft brown. Oh, they're also called the amadou fungus because that's what this is here. It's the amadou. And uh, when it's dried, uh, it can hold the flame for hours. So it's been used traditionally to transport fire from one camp to another camp. So and this is another example that I've harvested. This is a nice young one, so you can draw on it. So that's more to take home for my medicinal arsenal for my uh, mushroom teas. And you usually find tinders. I always find them on birch trees, along with the birch polypores. But they usually cover them. You see over here, this old dead birch tree. See all those black knobs? Those are all the dead tinder polypores. Tons of them going all the way up the tree. You can see, see they're all dead. Just fall apart. Yeah, and off to look for more mushrooms. See what we can find. It's raining, it's wet, but I prepared for it. It's another nice example for tinder polypore. You can see the grow rings. I mean, each year it grows a new ring. Kind of like a tree, right? You can see it's still fresh. And here's another example of a beautiful medicinal mushroom. <clears throat> These are the red belted polypore. You can see they're red on them. That's why they call them the red belt and polypore. These guys can grow pretty large. They can grow as big as a dinner plate. But I won't be harvesting any of these because I have plenty. But these guys are very medicinal. They are related to the reishi mushroom. So they are a little bitter in the tea. They are a little bitter. But you get used to it. And I actually quite like it. I like to mix them with... Again, the birch, polypore, tinder, chaga, artist conch, all those kind. But what you can do, which is kind of interesting, is underneath the mushrooms, you can see this stuff here. It's drips. It's called mycopea. Sounds pretty funny. But it's an excretion they have when it's wet out. And you can taste it. And it's kind of sweet. It's a good taste. A little dose of medicine while you're out here in the, in the bush, hiking. Here's some examples of red belts. Huge one over there. You can't really tell how big it is on the screen, but it's, uh, it's about as big as my head. It's too far out to harvest, but it would be a perfect one for medicine. But he's spreading the spores. Now here we got a wild delicacy. These are the uh, orange jelly mushrooms. I believe they can all, they're, they might be witch's butter, which is another variety of uh, jelly mushrooms. But as weird as they are, these guys are edible. Look, they just fall right off. And they taste really good. Cook them up in a pan, just put a lid on it because they will pop right out. It's not a whole lot. But I might try to get some harvest to try. Looks like some people try to make uh, little pools here. It's pretty neat. I might have to come back here and uh, go for a swim. In the summer, that is. But either way, I'm on my way home, so uh, stay tuned for a taste test of the birch polypore. I'm going to cook it up and see how it is. First time tasting it. Mmm, this is not what we're here for. This is what we're here for. A little polypore, the birch polypore. We're gonna cut them up and uh, give it a taste test. Fry them in the pan. 
So we got them starting to cook up here. I got one of the spore pads from one of the bigger ones and uh, on the edges. The middle part is pretty tough, so we're gonna, just gonna try the edges and this will probably dry in for my medicinal tea. All right, so these are the pieces. We got some taste testers. Let's give it a go. Here's a piece for you two. Right. This is that's the spore pad. It got all crunchy. Oh, it's it's got the texture of like a potato wedge. I know, right? Dink it and sink it. Oh wow! Yeah, it is a bit bitter. It is bitter. But whoa! Like, whoa! The more you chew it, the more it really releases its bitterness. Mm -hmm. It's quite bitter, actually. Oh, so, it's really, oh, whoa! It just like, oh! It just hits you. Up. <laughs> wow. Well, this is definitely one we'll be using for medicinal tea. That bitterness is the medicine right there. Mm -hmm. But you can say why. Well, I'm gonna finish him though. It's not bad, but you chew yeah. it and then you yeah. swallow it and then it just kicks you in the now face. Do you have the crunch speed spore pad? Just a little piece of it. It's actually so bitter. Yeah, it's fairly bitter. Well, but worth like a try. at certain notes, all you taste is like the butter that was or uh, the oil that it was cooked in. Yeah. Yep, a little bit of butter, a little bit Ooh. of salt and pepper, but still doesn't cover that bitterness. No, not at all. all right. So, lesson learned. Birch polypores, medicinal tea. Not really best for food. But I'll eat the anyways, of thanks for watching. Get yourself some birch poly pores. It's not for food.